Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on uniform convergence. Today I will explain you the Dini theorem. Myself Dr. Harishkar. You can follow my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of real analysis. In this playlist you can see the various lecture related to the convergence, pointwise uniform convergence, MN test and the other properties of the uniform convergence. You must subscribe my YouTube channel so that when I uploaded my next video you will get the notification. So what we have discussed in our last lectures, if you have a sequence of the function which converges uniformly to the f and each of the fn is my continuous, then this f is also continuous. Fine. On the other hand, can we say the converse of this theorem also hold? That means if I say my sequence of the function fn converges to the f pointwise and and fn as well as f both are my continuous then can you say fn converges to the f uniformly the answer is no fine so for more detail about this lecture you must watch about my this uniform convergence and continuity which is available at this playlist now so remember the uniform convergence of the fn is only the sufficient condition these are not necessary that means the converse of this theorem is not true. So once the condition converse is not true, then we have to think some additional conditions apart from the fn converges to the f pointwise plus fn and f are my continuous. Fine. How you can say this converges to the f uniformly? That means you have to add some additional condition so that it implies fn converges to the f uniform and what is that additional condition that additional condition is fn should be monotonic with respect to the n fine that means either fn plus 1 is greater than or equal to fn or fn plus 1 is less than or equal to fn that means either the function of the sequence is monotonically increasing or decreasing if these conditions three are satisfied then only you can say fn converges to the f uniformly and this result this result is called as the Dini's theorem on the uniform convergence of sequence in this lecture i will explain you the proof of these theorems as well as i will explain you with the help of the numerical examples how you can check the uniform convergence by using Dini's theorem but before that let me quickly recall you the definitions and the proof in a very very simple manner i hope you can like and comment on this video as well now make sure whenever we are working on the Dini's theorem the domain domain must be the compact set so Dini theorem is applicable only when you have the compact set such that fn is my monotonic fn is my continuous such that f n converges to the f pointwise and f is my continuous so once these three conditions are satisfied then only you can say f n converges uniform the proof is a very very simple now you can see that f n and f both are my continuous functions so what does it implies f n minus f is also continuous because the difference of the two continuous function is also continuous. Another thing, what is given to you, fn is my monotonic. So what does it mean? Either the function is my increasing or the function is decreasing. So let's assume that fn is the sequence which is my decreasing. Fine. Now another thing is given to you, fn converges to the f point wise. What does it mean? I can say fn minus f because I need a fn minus f which converges to the zero point wise. Fine. And fn is my decreasing. So you can see fn minus f decreasing to the zero point wise. That means this is my lower bound. Now, once then your target is to prove fn minus fn converges to f uniformly. So for this, what you need to prove your target is to prove fnx minus fx is less than epsilon 
for all n greater than equal to m and for all x belong to the compact set remember always the dini theorem is applicable whenever it's a compact set fine so i can prove it by contradiction assume that the sequence is not uniform convergent that means this definition instead of the less than sign it is my greater than or equal to sign fine now it is occurring for infinitely many n so since it is occurring for infinitely many n i can assume it occurring for all the values of the n so what does it means if it is occurring for all the values of the n and a is my compact set i can assume any of the xn which belongs to the a any of the xn which belongs to the a such that this equation number 1 hold that means f of n xn minus f of xn is greater than equal to upside fine now since a is my compact set it is given to you as a a is compact set and xn belongs to the my a so what which things come in your mind when you look about the compact set and the sequence that means you are talking about the bolzano theorems fine what is the bolzano theorems if you have the sequence xn there exists a sub sequence say x and j there exists a sub sequence x and j which converges to some point say x star fine that means x and j converges to the x star now now fn is my decreasing sequence fine so what is the meaning of that if i choose any two numbers m or n such that m is my less than equal to n what does it means this is decreasing sequence with respect to the n with respect to n that means f of m is greater than or equal to f of n that is the meaning of the decreasing sequence fine now i can apply this definition i can subtract f on the both side f of m x minus fx is greater than or equal to f of nx minus fx is it okay fine now if i want to use this definition i can replace x to be the x n fine so i can replace i can take m to be the nk or n to be the nj in this equation so i can take m and n now what is the meaning of that because this number is my greater than of epsilon by using this definition clear now we can take we can take n j approaches infinity by using this condition what will happen this equation what is the value of this case this is my f of n k of x star minus f of x star is my greater than or equal to upside fine for all the values of the n k and x star belongs to the my a what does it implies this implies f of n k minus f is not converges to the zero point wise fine and which is my contradiction because we already taken that fn converges to the f point wise so therefore our assumption is wrong hence sequence converges to the f uniform and you can see that it's a very very simple proof based on this bolzano theorem you can prove it in a very simple manner i will explain you the proof again with the help of the numerical example check whether the sequence of the function defined by this is a uniform convergent or not again you can see i will tell you the three different methods how you can solve this question either with the help of the method 1 method 2 or method 3 fine method 3 i can think about the dini's theorem why i can think about the dini's theorem because i can see my domain what is my domain is 2024 2027 2027 is my compact set fine now remember always instead of this domain if you taken as a domain is say 3,4 or any of the domain say 
or any domain. Again, it's a close and bounded. That's a compact. So Dini theorem is applicable. The first two definitions, how you can check about the uniform convergence by using the MN test. And these I have already explained in my previous lectures, which you can obtain from these playlists. So you can solve this problem, check whether it's a uniform convergent or not by using method one or method two, that you can do it by law. Now, I can use it by the Dini's theorem. Now, what is the target for the Dini's theorem? Your first target is the domain must be the compact, Fn is a monotonic, convergent pointwise, and they are continuous. If all these four, which are actually the necessary conditions before applying the Dini's theorem, then only you can say it is bound, uniformly convergent. So first point, let's assume how you can check about the domain is compact. Now since this is my closed and bounded, so what does it mean? The domain is com compact. So the first property, four. Second, how you can check about the monotonic? So remember always this is a monotonic with respect to the n, not with respect to the x. So that means what is your target? Your target is to check whether this function is a monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing. Fine. Now you can see I need a n and n plus 1. Clearly say n plus 1 is always be greater than or always be greater than of the n, strictly greater than of the n. Fine. Now because I need a 1 over n, so that means 1 over n plus 1 is strictly less than of the 1 over n. Fine. Now I need a x raised to power 1 over n plus 1. Now since what is my domain? So since x belongs to the my 2, 0, 2, 4, comma 2, 0, 2, 7 and we know whenever x is my greater than 1, x raised to power 1 over n is my increasing. Fine. So you can see this number is also less than of 1 over x into 1 by. Now I need a negative number. So I can subtract. I can take a negative on the both side. This inequality change. Fine. This you can see why because it is x is my greater than 1. And I can add 1 on the both side. Now I need multiply by n because I can multiply this equation number 1 and equation number 2, what you obtained n plus 1 into 1 minus x raised to power n plus 1 is greater than of n into 1 minus x raised to power 1 by n. So what does the meaning? This imply this is my f of n plus 1 x is greater than of f of n x. So what does it implies? fn is my monotonic increasing function. So that means the second property also hold. Third property, how you can check about the pointwise convergent? That means your target is to find the functions f of x such that f of x will be my limit of the fnx. I can substitute the value of the fnx. Now it is my infinity into 1 minus because x is my greater than 1. So x will be 0, that's a 1. So it is my infinity into 0 form. That means this is my indetermined form. So once this is indetermined form, I can use the definition of allopeter rule. I can apply divided by 1 over n. Fine. Now clearly say this is my 0 by 0 form. Once this is my 0 by 0 form, I can apply the allopeter rule with respect to the n. So denominator is minus 1 over x here. 1 will be 0 minus x raised to power 1 over x into log x into minus 1 over n square. Now clearly say minus 1 over n square minus 1 over n square cancel. So your limit will be n approaches infinity minus x raised to power 1 over n into log x. Fine. Now since the limit is with respect to the n minus of log x I can take in as the outside. And what is the limit as x approaches infinity? It is my 1. Why? Because x is my greater than of 1. So therefore, my fx is minus of log x. Therefore, fnx converges to the fx pointwise on this domain.
fine so third property also satisfied now you can check for the continuity what is my fn fn is n into 1 minus x raised to power 1 by n and what is the fx is minus of log x does these two functions are continuous for all x belongs to my closed interval of 2024 to 2027 yes both are my continuous because you can see that log is a continuous function in this domain x raised to power 1 by n is also continuous in this domain now all those properties of the uniform convergence Denis theorems are satisfied so therefore we can say fn converges to the f uniform fine so this is the one way you can prove the uniform convergence make sure student if in the given statement instead of this close interval like if i ask you in this given statement instead of this line if they are asking you can you taken this is my say uh, 1.5 comma 7 2r then still it is a uniform convergent why because x is my greater than 1 then this limit does not impact on that fine so for more details about the first and second method that you can try it yourself by watching these videos available at my youtube channel dr harikar i hope you can like and comment on this video we will see the next lecture very soon on the next topic which is on the uniform continuity and the differentiability properties till then you can like share and comment on this video best of luck students and don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel happy learning audience